By J. Freedom Dulac J. Freedom Dulac General Assignment Editor Covering National, International and Breaking News Email Bio Follow September 11 at 12.28 p.m. This photo from September 11, 2001, shows Marcy Borders covered in dust as she takes refuge in an office building after one of the World Trade Center towers collapsed in New York. Borders was caught outside on the street as the cloud of smoke and dust enveloped the area. Stan Honda AFP Getty Images, this blog post is adapted from an archival Washington Post article originally published in 2015. When the World Trade Center South Tower collapsed just before 10 a.m. on September 11, 2001, photographer Stan Honda was in Lower Manhattan, taking pictures of the incomprehensible scene. There was a giant roar, like a train, and between the buildings I could see huge clouds of smoke and dust billowing out, Honda recounted years later. He ducked into a building lobby where a police officer was pulling people into the entrance to get them out of the danger. A woman came in completely covered in grey dust, Honda recalled in 2011. You could tell she was nicely dressed for work, and for a second she stood in the lobby. I took one shot of her before the police officer started to direct people up a set of stairs, thinking it would be safer off the ground level. The woman turned out to be Marcy Borders, who had only recently begun working for Bank of America in the World Trade Center when the first plane struck. She was 28 at the time, and Honda's haunting photo of her, distributed worldwide by Agents France Press, became one of the most iconic images of that horrifying day. The image, and thus, Borders, became known as Dust Lady. But Borders became severely depressed and started smoking crack in the years after the attack, she said, before finally finding peace of mind after rehab and the death of 9-11's mastermind Osama bin Laden. Then, sickness struck, Borders received a diagnosis of stomach cancer in August 2014, according to the Jersey Journal. F-16 pilot was ready to give her life on September 11th she died in 2015 at the age of 42, a difficult reminder of the tragedy our city suffered nearly 14 years ago, New York Mayor Bill de Blasio said at the time. Nick holds her loved ones in our hearts. My mom fought an amazing battle, Noelle Borders told the New York Post. Not only is she the dust lady, but she is my hero and she will forever live through me. A cousin wrote on Facebook at the time that Borders unfortunately succumbed to the diseases that have ridden her body since 9-11, according to the Jersey Journal. In addition to losing so many friends, co-workers, and colleagues on and after that tragic day, the pains from yesteryear have found a way to resurface, John Borders wrote. When she was diagnosed, Borders wondered whether the disease was related to 9-11. I'm saying to myself, did this thing ignite cancer cells in me? She told the Jersey Journal the year before her death. I definitely believe it, because I haven't had any illnesses. I don't have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. How do you go from being healthy to waking up the next day with cancer, she said before sobbing, according to the newspaper. Some types of cancers are among the illnesses covered by the September 11 Compensation Fund, but it is unclear whether there is a link between the disease and the wreckage and debris left after the attacks. A 2012 study by the New York City Health Department found no clear link. 
but in 2014, just a month after Borders was diagnosed with cancer, three former members of the New York City Fire Department who had responded to the World Trade Center died on the same day. All three suffered from cancer. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, DNY, noted in a statement at the time, while we honor these men and mourn their loss, it is a stark reminder that 13 years later, the health effects of 9-11s are far from over and will be with us for many years to come. After Borders died, 